My name is Pat Latham, and I am a member of the Council for Exceptional Children Division on Autism and Developmental Disabilities. Today, I will share what to do when reinforcement alone has not been successful to increase a replacement behavior. The strategy is called Response Interruption and Redirection, or RIR for short. I will first share three examples of RIR in practice, and then provide you with some additional resources to learn more about this particular strategy. Example number one, imagine that you're at a friend's party. The music, conversation, food, drinks, and overall atmosphere is pretty relaxing and inviting. Suddenly, the music and conversation stop. Someone has just revealed to your friend that she is pregnant and wants him to leave his current spouse to be with her. Have you ever been in an awkward situation like that? From across the room, you blurt out, hey, how about the local sports team? I mean, they lost last night, so they're not doing so well in the playoffs right now, right? Example number two, at work, you walk into the break room where your coworkers are complaining about parents, students, clients, and or the administration. After listening to a minute of the complaints, you realize that the negativity is increasing. You wait for a pause in the conversation and then state, hey, have you heard that so-and-so were married over the weekend? Your coworkers immediately switch from complaining to asking you questions about this new topic. This last example comes from a real life experience I had while a special educator in an elementary setting. The bell had just rung for the students to return to class from outside recess. Johnny, the nine-year-old diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, has started to exhibit what I will call shutdown behaviors. For example, he was just standing still on the blacktop wouldn't tell me what had gotten him upset, just wouldn't move. Storm clouds were quickly forming above and I could see lightning in the distance. As soon as I was about to physically pick him up and move him to safety, I noticed a scorpion walking across the blacktop. Johnny, look at that scorpion, I said. Johnny quickly turned around and began to ask questions about it. Why is it crawling here? Where is he going? Can we keep it as a class pet? Recognizing that Johnny's behavior had been interrupted and redirected to something else, I use this as the opportunity to guide him to comply with the original direction. Johnny, we can trap the animal as a pet, but we need to get something to put it in. He immediately began moving towards the school doors, away from the approaching thunderstorm and into the safety of the school building. So now all three of these examples demonstrate response interruption and redirection. It is this idea of introducing a prompt comment or other distractor when an interfering behavior is occurring and it's designed to divert the learner's attention away from the interfering behavior and results in its reduction. Now more technically, RIR is used predominantly to address behaviors that are repetitive, stereotypical, and or self-injurious. Response interruption redirection often is implemented after a functional behavior assessment has been conducted to identify the function of the interfering behavior. It is particularly useful with persistent interfering behaviors that occur in the absence of other people in a number of different settings and during a variety of tasks. These behaviors often are not maintained by attention or escape. Instead, they are more likely maintained by sensory reinforcement and are often resistant to intervention attempts. Response interruption redirection is particularly effective with sensory maintained behaviors because learners are interrupted from engaging in the interfering behaviors and redirected to more appropriate alternative behavior. So unfortunately, the time constraints of this video don't allow me to describe the details about how to use response interruption and redirection. In the meantime, I encourage you to go to your web browser and go to the Autism Focused Intervention Resources and Modules website that you can see here. There, you can access this free resource and learn more about the specifics of response interruption and redirection. For example, how to deal with motor stereotypy, vocal stereotypy, or object stereotypy. Now, as you begin to learn more about this strategy and use it, I encourage you to come back and, and comment below about how you have used it and what positive effects that you have seen. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me by email, by completing the Affirm module, or reading one of the peer-reviewed articles listed on the screen. Good luck in your attempts to learn more about response interruption and redirection.